welcome to the first ever Outlander fan panel at San Diego Comic Con. And thank you so much for joining us. We hope this is, well, this is the first, obviously, and uh, we hope this is the first of many, as long as we are blessed with the show, which we kind of saw last night, but let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, first is intros. I am a host, co-host and producer of the Outlander podcast, the original fan podcast about all things Outlander, books and TV. And I am Summer, her co-host and sister, who she's dragged along on her journey. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sarah Kaisak, and I am the owner of Val Energy News, and I actually, you know, write for it. I'm Mandy Tidwell, and I do the Great Scott blog, where I made a valiant attempt to translate the Gaelic in the first two seasons of, of um, Outlander. So, by virtue of that, Fiskerman and Kimarashi, which is the Gaelic for how are y'all? Is that, y- is that y'all? Y'all. Yeah. More than one. Kemar Hashim is more than one plural. That's true. I was like, how do you, how do you translate, uh, translate y'all? Because it would, it would just be the plural. Yeah, it's true. Got it. We won't get into linguistics because, yeah. The English translation is seven. Yes. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. That's cool. So how many of you guys were in the panel yesterday? Did you guys all make it in? Oh. You can clap. You this can is, clap. oh, you know what? Okay. We haven't said this yet. So we are videotaping and audio recording this because we do would love to repurpose this as a, an actual episode so you this is actually our first live recorded podcast episode well we record ever. them all live well because we're not <laughs> croaked but never with a live <laughs> audience <laughs> never with a live audience and um, also we are um, having this videotape so we hope to put it on YouTube as well so that's that we've done all the clearances we've got all the approval so we um, are very very excited okay so the reason I mention that is because please, since you guys are, you're, you're more than half of the thing here, so please don't be afraid to clap. In, involve yourself as you did in the intro. So um, yeah, Summer was kind of going there. Where were you going? Well, I, I was trying to get a gauge of how many people got to see episode one to decide how much we talk about episode one of season three. Who did not see episode one yesterday? One person. Okay. Two people. <laughs> Two people. Two people. Oh, you were volunteering. Oh, well, bless you. Oh! Oh no. oh no! Oh no! Well, are you a fan of, of the show? Of course. Of Alan? Okay. Well, I didn't know because if you're not a fan of the show and you're just here like waiting for something else, then you probably wouldn't care if we talked about it. Um, <laughs> is that okay? Okay. And, 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 and we build this as a you know spoiler zone, no holds barred. So I mean, I think yes. we're going to talk about it, but I don't think we're going to descend into like blow by blow descriptions. Yeah. Um, mainly because I had my eyes closed during those scenes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mandy can't handle more. I'm sorry. And I kept looking away. There's a screen over there, too. <laughs> oh, I know. Where do you look? Like, it's over here. Oh, no, it's over there. I mean, yeah. So we've done the little intro. Summer's introduced it. So most of us in this room have seen it. So do we just want to, like, again, not, like, blow by blow, as they said, but just uh, mm-hmm. kind of go down the row and talk about what either shocked you, freaked you out, what you loved, what you were surprised at, anything like that. What was your first uh, impression or your overall one number one big takeaway? Like, oh my gosh, good or bad? I don't know. I, there was just, it was a lot. I, first of all, I was not surprised they showed it. When I saw that the panel was going to be an hour and a half, that was my first thought was that they were going to actually show the first episode. I was hoping they were going to show the first episode. Um, and I didn't know where they were going to pick it up because there were several places they could have picked it up, but they literally picked it up. I felt like where it stopped the previous season, which I, I'm glad for because the, the way that they started the season before was a lot like the book, to be honest, where you have the whiplash moment of, wait, am I reading the wrong book? Well, they didn't pick up where Claire's story left off Correct. at the end of season two, but they did pick up where Jamie's did. So, um. So Sarah, what was your I, biggest every surprise? Every single first episode of the season, I cry at the intro, so that happened again. <laughs> um, I think it's just like, you get like so anxious and overwhelmed, and um, so I was a little teary-eyed just through the opening credits, and um, it's man... It's cool hearing the entire ballroom seeing the theme song, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I just really love the, the lighting and some of the kind of segues from one to the other, from, like, Jamie's face to Frank's face in that one scene. Um, the lighting uh, where Jamie and BGR see each other for the first time, it completely changed. And, man, I love BGR. First of all, I love Tobias. So, to Frank, I'm a Frank lover just because of Tobias. Um, if it was by another actor that I didn't really like, it would be totally different. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, that was, that was probably my favorite part. When they saw each other at the battlefield the first time, it kind of had a romantic feel to it. Oh, I said that oh, last. Yeah, I yeah, said yeah. that last night in our in our hotel room. We were talking to our our friend um, uh, Carmen. I said, you know what? This is going to sound kind of funky town, maybe. But let me at least get it out, and then you can like slay me. Um, when they like, s- okay, I hope I'm not spy. Their time on the on the battlefield, right? When they first saw each other, and then their little fight, whatever. It was it was a little. It was a uh, romantic is a good way to put it. It was very sexual. It felt like a callback to Woodward. With their really swords and everything. I feel like they were echoing some of that dynamic mm-hmm. between um, Jamie and Black Jack in the Woodward episodes. As reluctant as, as it may be. <laughs> <laughs> but it was almost like people meeting at the railroad, the railway station, and seeing their eyes across a crowded room and then running for each other. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're trying to I kill mean, each other. With ill intent, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> not the same intent, but it was that yeah. moment of... Do you think BGR wanted to kill Jamie? I think it was more Jamie the other way around. I think, yeah, I think Jamie definitely wanted to kill Blackjack. I think Blackjack just wanted to hurt Jamie. He seems yeah, that he, that's, he, true. that's that dynamic of, of the, the sadomasochism in front of, from the piece of Blackjack. But it was, it was interesting. I thought, you know, we, we were talking last night about what's your one word description. Hmm. I thought for me, the one word that describes the, the episode was haunting. And, and haunting in a lot of different ways. You could tell that that Jamie was very haunted already by what he, he had already lost with, with Claire. And I really thought it was cool to see, you know, him at the Stones after she'd gone. Because, you know, that's kind of stuff, you, you know, intellectually you knew it happened, but I never really thought about what he went through. And so it was kind of very, I thought it was very interesting to see that. Um, but then you can also see how Claire is haunted, you know, even back in the 40s. I mean, you, you could see it. That's the, to me, the gift of Katrina is, is she can just... In her eyes, she can do things that, that you can't do with dialogue. Um, that was that was very very interesting. I will say, and, and you know, I know outlander fans, we don't like to criticize anything. Um, I thought there was a little too much of Jamie breathing. <laughs> okay, you know, <laughs> we get it. He's still breathing in out in out, but. Um, but it was, it was good. It was interesting to me. Uh-huh. To me, I, I <laughs> love Ron. I think Ron does a fabulous job with this show, but I can tell the episodes that he writes. And he likes to, it's not enough for him, him to hint at something. Sometimes he likes to hammer it. Head but a lot of that might have been director as well. Yeah, absolutely. Really, absolutely. Because absolutely. That, that wasn't really lines. It was just right. you know, wanting to extend that. Thing. Yeah. I mean, it keeps flashing back to him in that position, but yeah. how much time and so how they confess it. But, but I, I will say that uh, the, the one thing that I mean, that really got me was when, you know, after Claire had the baby and she wakes up, she's like, where's my baby? Where's my baby? Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, That's I'm glad. I started crying because I cried all the way I'm, to the face. I'm so. glad Mandy said that because one of the things overall that I took away and I noticed right away, the very first one I saw was when they were looking around in the Boston apartment and they were looking around like, da 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 What did that remind you of? Castle Leah. In season one, when they were walking around in the 40s, just looking around, I was like, holy Hannah. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, maybe they just did the mirror there. And another time was after she had the baby. I was like, it was holy Hannah, right after she had Faith. Same, I mean, you could have put, I want to put that side by side now. And it was the same tone, the same desperation in her voice. And I was like, holy crap balls. I hope I don't like, like, no, I didn't. What blow a gasket? Come on, who didn't cry? I probably cried 20 times. That, no. Thank you. Thank you. I, I had a tissue. I offered one to my neighbor. She's like, oh, no, thanks. I'm like, oh, okay, got it. You, you don't, you love it, but you don't like, okay, I see. Okay. Another callback they used was the drive by the Amber. Uh, oh, she yeah. Found, she found at yep. the, you know, museum at the end of season two. Which now we know how it got there. Yes, <laughs> magically. <laughs> so they, they're, they're really still trying to tie in season yep. two. Uh, and yeah. make, you know. But how many people buy Claire cooking in the fireplace? <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm really thinking she's like, let's go off time. <laughs> yeah. I was expecting that stove to explode at any minute. Seriously. Like, how hard is it to light the gas? <laughs> and but it, I didn't live in the 50s. Maybe it was. Did you have a question? Yeah, I'm interested to hear your take to help me decide if I liked it or not. But to me, it felt like it bounced back and forth from Jamie to Claire a lot, almost to the point where I couldn't get into one side or the other. And um, I'm, and it, it didn't even follow the same timeline with both of them. So I'm just sort of curious 
what you all found out. I think yeah. maybe maybe it would have been a little better. I mean, yeah, it does get a little cookie jerky when you go back and forth so many times if they just did, you know, first half Jamie and then went to Claire or mm-hmm. Claire first, then Jamie might have flowed a little better. Um, yeah, I think what they were trying to do is you could tell that every time, you know, they cut to Jamie, but then cut back to, to Claire and Frank, they were trying to show how much time was progressing with with you know Claire and everything about how pregnant she was. It's like first time she was this pregnant, next time she was this pregnant. Yeah. And, and so I think that became disconcerting because you know it's like a day, day or two days max passed for Jamie for the all of his scenes in the episode. Right. But like eight months or you know seven months passed for for Claire and Frank. And I, I think it was a little disconcerting. Yeah. Um, maybe it would have not worked so well for Claire's story. One scene she's somewhat pregnant, and then the next right. scene, next it just <laughs> immediately and she's got a huge belly. Because um, yeah. that's been criticized before in yeah. season two. Well, I mean, yeah. you just kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah, I would like to comment that I thought that the reason why there was that much following uh, between the two. There's a mic up here if you want to. Um, Everybody hear me? Well, we're a little yeah, but the audio, the, the, the audio might not get you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I got a lecturer's voice, so. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that the reason why there was as much toddling as what there was between Jamie's story and Claire's story is because they were trying to demonstrate parallels mm-hmm. that were occurring in the two lives. They weren't occurring exactly at the same time frames, as you point out. But one of them is the labored breathing. Claire went through labor, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the other one is, is that I remember when she comes back, everybody's read the books, right? And mm-hmm. so when she comes back, She's afraid that her body is going to show her age and wears and tears of pregnancy. And Jamie, Jamie comments to her, look at my scars and your scars, your stretch marks are evidence of the battles that you fought as well as the ones that I did. And I think that throughout this, this is what I got out of the top of yeah. back and forth, is that they were trying to demonstrate that each of them were going through things that were, at, yeah. at, in that yeah. way, were similar. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I, I think that's absolutely valid. I think that's what we're trying to do. And I think you have to do that. I think what made it a little awkward for me was the time wasn't passing at the same rate for them. Yeah. You know, it was passing very slowly for Jamie because we're only going through like two days and, you know, half the episode. Whereas we're going through several months. I'm hoping as we move forward in the story, and it's more about, you know, um, you know, as Bree's growing up and then as Jamie's having his experiences with hell water, et cetera, that the, the rate of change will be, or the, the pace of the story um, timeline will be a little more equal between them. Well, one of the things that um, I also saw besides the whole Lally Brach, Boston apartment thing, and, and I think I mentioned another one, was that I thought, who else thought or guessed, um, kind of in the first like 10 minutes, pretty early on, oh my gosh, I see what they're doing. They're going to end it with him starting his new life. Difficult, but his new life, because he thought he was going to die. We all knew that. He wants to die. He says nothing almost in the entire episode of just kill me, leave me, let me go. That, he went there with a purpose. That was it. He has nothing else to live for except for his country. That thing didn't work. And he went back. He was planning on dying. So when he was put in that cart and taken back, he's like, oh, gosh. He has to, like, figure out now what. So his new life starts at the very end of the show, as does Claire's and Frank's and Bree's literally begins. So I, who else thought about that? In the first 10 minutes, you're like, oh, I know where they're going. Yeah? Yeah, yeah that's what I, I thought. And I have to inject a little bit of humor about how many people as he's running in the wagon and you hear the chicken's car flashing back to the chicken's <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I do. Like, Ron is excellent. I think Alan in general is excellent. Is it putting just enough humor in there that you don't dissolve? Don't love Into the tears, fear. even though we did. Oh, I, so. I was just going to say that jumping back and forth, I think part of it was to make us uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I oh, yeah. It was like it was supposed to be a little jarring because you were supposed to feel what they were feeling. If it was just a smooth, mm-hmm. oh, here's Jamie's story, the end, and here's Claire's story, the end. I think it would have been just too smooth. And I think it was, the pacing was different for each of their stories. Mm-hmm. And it made us uncomfortable because we were supposed to be feeling what they were feeling. So. Did anyone else have a really hard time with the one transition that went from Jamie looking up to then Frank's oh, face? Frank. See, that's what, mm-hmm. one of the things I loved. 
Because I got very confused. Yeah. I thought somebody was looking at that. Blackjack. No, that's the thing. Well, I didn't know if it was Jamie hallucinating and seeing Blackjack looking down at him when it was really supposed to be the, the officer looking down at him, or if it was actually a transition. And then right. until the clock started ticking, I was, like, very confused. And we also had a debate about this, this too, last night. You know, after they gone through most of the battle scenes and, and you know, Jamie Blackjack had that initial combat when everything disappears... And it's just the dead on the field and those two fighting with no one else around. How many people think that was literal and how many people at that point think Jamie is, is fever dreams in his head? Because it's right before he knows he sees Claire walking through the battlefield. Because I don't think that was literal. Because, I mean, you wouldn't have an empty battlefield like that. Because there would have been regular, you know, you had all that kind of stuff. It was just his memory. It yeah. Was his yeah. interpretation. Yeah. yeah. And, and that part was most, that was about when he did the, the knife thing, right? It was during that sequence. So, you know, there's been this whole controversy because we all know from book, the books, Diana, Jane doesn't remember yet exactly what happened on the battlefield. So I think what they show is not necessarily literally what happened. It's just a fevered uh, dream sequence kind of deal. So that's my kind of interpretation of that. Someone mentioned music earlier. Who was listening for themes? Just this one. Just this one? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Marifel, thank you. Okay, so you may know or not, if you're new to our podcast or you've never listened, that my first, I'm a music major when I was very young. And so I, we've been very lucky to interview Bear, I think, three times. Could be twice. I think it's three times. But, of course, whenever I ask him about the music and all this stuff, but I, like, try to, I'll try uh, there's no trying. I just do. I just, I kind of get a little bit geeky, probably more than the average, like, consumer would really even care, like, oh, what? Like, I had to look up that word. No, so, um, so I, I listen for it, not on purpose, but I hear it. And last night, and I did not write it down, last night, well, yesterday afternoon, there was some point where I, and it may have been that transition, I'm not sure, but it was where there was uh, Jamie. And Claire was involved, so it may have been the time when she was walking down the walking the the the, the, the yeah. his his vision. He's she's walking down the field, and then something then turns. Frank appears, right? At some point there, okay. So there was some okay, okay. So there was some point where Jamie and Claire were juxtaposed, or it was a transition, and then Frank is there. Now it could have been just their love theme without Jamie, but us recommending or remembering Jamie through the theme with her only but it was their theme and then Frank shows up and you hear the da 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 and you hear his clarinet theme and I went damn it yeah. bear I mean it's like you don't even need you don't you don't even yeah so yeah, I that's yeah, freaking out the, the Jamie and Claire theme definitely during that yeah. Battlefield dream sequence mm -hmm. I mean then the Lolly Bar theme when he finally makes it back that that was one of the points that the music really um, you know, influenced what I was doing we were, well. but we were discussing last night how, how quiet the episode was like the battlefield while you could hear the sounds of the battle it wasn't like Hollywood blockbuster super loud music super loud cannons mm -hmm. like the loudest the battlefield ever was was before they ever got to it when they were shelling no, them from the other side it was pretty loud when they were fighting and there were bones breaking and <sighs> yelling and everything but like that's that. all you huge. heard but that's all you heard it wasn't like swelling music and a bunch of other stuff oh I see what you're saying it so it was battlefield good. sounds it was, it was it battle sounds yeah, okay. it was fairly restrained for a battle sequence it could have been worse like I said that yeah. But did you guys, um, have, have any of you studied, or uh, either, you don't even necessarily have to have been to Collard and Battlefield, but has anyone um, outside of Diana's books um, even read just a tiny bit about the Battle of Culloden? You know, it was over, okay, you know, it was over in like minutes, and uh, almost everyone was slaughtered, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we saw, right? And it kind of brings it like to your gut, and it's like, and, and I will look oh, God. the closet three or four times now, and you really, honestly, I'm not much of a spooky person kind of, you know, feeling ghosted, but you feel something in that, in that place. It just, it, it, it's nothing you can put your finger on. You just feel something. Um, and it's pretty Haunting cool. is another good word for that, the same word you used earlier. Cool. Well, that kind of brings up, you know, um, you know we, we know now all the questions are settled about what happens in, in episode one. So what do we think from what we saw of, of that, what that's going to mean for the rest of the season in terms of how it's going to be paced and how long are we going to have to wait for the print shop? I have one idea. Episode 6, right? I think it's 306. <laughs> People have kind of 
like looked on IMDb or other places. But I, one thing I will say, and I, well, I know, and I think you, you guys have all watched the trailer, right? That was released Tuesday. Okay. Where did it stop? Well, that's what I'm looking for. So the trailer ended at, well, just before she enters the print shop. So what we know is wherever that is, and, and that scene, whatever, what, what was missing from the trailer? A whole lot, right? There's Even so hints. So much more book after Like, that. everything after, I mean, obviously Edinburgh is missing, but at least her getting to Edinburgh, well, she's walking through the streets, but her getting to Edinburgh kind of hints at, of course, Edinburgh. But after they meet, like, we have... Ian and the boat and Jamaica, so there's so much. And I, that show it, all that, though, in the trailer. Really no. People don't, not everyone watches the show reads the book. So that, that's my they, point. There was so much told, missing. They, you pretty much it's exciting. they're going to be re- together again because you know there's eight books. Like, they're not going to make eight seasons of <laughs> Jamie and Claire separated but for they life. Could. <laughs> they could, uh, but they won't. There might be an uprising. <laughs> um, so they're not going to show all that stuff because... That's all spoilers. I mean, if Game of Thrones put out a, a trailer like that, um, it showed the whole what happens basically the whole entire season um, for when the you know there was actually a book for a season. I mean, yeah, it would have been great for uh, book readers to see all that, but people like me who have never read the books would have been like, well, what's the point now of, of watching the whole season? Yeah. This happens with movie trailers a lot too, where they give too much away about the entire movie. Oh, but we're talking, yeah. but we're talking so, pacing. As as we want to see more of when they're together. They're not going to show it. They're not going to show it in a trailer. I mean, I'm surprised they even did the whole thing after you Me know too. her getting to Edinburgh at all. Has anybody had a chance to watch some of the interviews from yesterday that EW did and all those? Um, I know they asked specifically Diana, you know, what what's your favorite moment so far from the episodes you've seen? And she said something about the end of episode four broke her heart. And I was trying to figure out in my mind, okay, what before because I've been before the print shop, what would they end on that could, would break her heart? Could be, you know, I have any ideas? Could be Brianna saying goodbye to Claire. Yeah, that would be that, you know. Right. Oh, that gives her an episode to do all of her yeah, stuff indeed. before she has to go. Yeah. Oh, I think I think you're right. Well, it needs to be absolutely. Oh God, I'm thinking Claire. Yeah. You're thinking in the back. Got it. Oh Lord. Yeah. But okay, so we're talking, and this is along those lines. We're talking pacing. So the reason I brought up the trailer was not to say what it was missing. Oh boo hoo. No, I brought up the trailer because knowing where that is, they don't give it away where, but we know it's a, approximately around six. We think, and so if. It's going to take him, whatever we saw last night, right, or yesterday, from one to six, or part of six, or all of six, whatever, to get that. So that leaves us, what, seven episodes? So seven episodes to get through Edinburgh, the island, no, Lally Broth, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and then, oh, Lord, and Leary, and Marsali, Marsley, Parsley. Well, I'm reading Voyager right now because I've only read it once, and so I don't remember a lot of the details about when things happen. And I'm halfway through it right now, and um, it's uh, they're at Lolly Rock after the big Leary episode, and that's halfway through the book. Yep. So, like in my mind, I thought like the island stuff was a lot bigger part of the book, and it's not. So. There's, I think they've already said that there's four episodes that they shot in South Africa. So that we know at least four mm. are going to be at least set in island. So, but... Well, it, yeah, but they, they still, even after Claire comes back, they have to take care of all the stuff that happens at Water Rock. Exactly. Of, you know, her her uh, leaving, her not leaving. Right. Her <laughs> so it's going to be very interesting. But, like, what? That season... Two when they return to France and there there's a pretty significant portion where they're in Lolly Rock um, in the book right. and they didn't spend any time on that at all like yeah. it was like a happy time in the book if I remember, yeah. if I remember correctly so right. they could condense yeah. or take out a lot they could but there are some plot points that have to be addressed in terms of you know they've got to introduce the fact that he was married and I mean because they've got to have more sleep and, and oh no no yeah, I'm saying so that be addressed in there might be less sexy times. <laughs> yeah. Ron Moore um, alluded, I think, during the panel, he said there's some things hidden in the first 
episode that would inform the most, you know, washing of, of you know, the, the, the fans that really pay attention. And I just wondered. I think it's, it's yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's significant that Jamie asked about Murtaugh and nobody mm. knows. Mm-hmm. Nobody I, answered I at least, yeah. Now in the book, Jamie sees him dead next to him. That didn't happen, and things only don't happen or do happen in TV shows for a reason. And there's no reason for him to ask about it and nobody know if something's not going to happen. Well, in the book, <laughs> in the, I know. In the, but I will say, I'm not sure how long it's going to last. Because, I mean, I, I think we did see Duncan McCall film for um, what I expect, more than I expected this season, but then he did shave his beard. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What, what that means, I don't know. Well, in the so Jamie asked. You know, yeah, they right. 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 Said, no, I, right. 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 And that's what I'm saying. The fact that they have that in there means something because you don't have time in a TV show to put stuff in that doesn't mean stuff. No, and he, well, if you, if I, we just finished Voyager not too long ago, and there's an entire section where Jamie remembers talking to Myrta while he was dying. And he yeah. said, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't, doesn't hurt a bit. So the fact that he doesn't have that conversation in this, not in this episode, but that he doesn't know what happened to Myrta and nobody knows what happened to Myrta implies to me that we may be seeing him again. Or at least I, I hope we see him again. Yeah. Even Diana said that she wished that she hadn't killed off Myrta of the books, which leads you to believe that she would be perfectly happy to have him come back. Yeah. And theories. Does anybody else have some theories well, as to what might happen with that? Well, yeah, along, yes. Do you have any theories? Because just think about it. Let's just, let's play around because, again, this panel is no, no holes barred. Let's, uh, let's do that. Do you have anything, because uh, we're talking this, this TV series now, right? Because the books have already been done. Uh, if Murta isn't killed, how could that affect, not the storyline, but how he might be some, like, hop hop along helper along the way doing things that other little minor characters did that maybe we don't need now who knows what do you think um without changing main storylines what are some of your theories about uh about how that might how that might be because i have an idea Uh oh (laughs) my idea is that if you if you don't kill martha and he's still around then maybe he becomes another character and takes on the activities of another character like Duncan Ennis. Yes. Yeah. So, yep. you know, because you know how hard it is to film a one handed. <laughs> oh my so, god. Like, and they still fit with visual, visual effects and all that. But I mean, but to me, if they do choose to do that and it's, it's Murtaugh that's in prison with Jamie all those years, that changes that dynamic. Because one of the things that was important about that storyline in the books. Mm-hmm was how isolated Jamie felt because he didn't have any of his own people there with him. He had to take on he people had to create his own, his own plan. So, um, I mean, I, I can see it going both ways, and I have mixed feelings in my mind um, about it, but as always, I'm just good to see what they actually do with it. And, and, and Diana has said that, that that was one of the things that, because when people were saying, say, Murta, mm-hmm. you know, that she said no. But I think there's the potential that he could be transported somewhere. Yeah. From a and, different person. Right. And yeah. there would be another uh, character mm-hmm. that Jamie had a relationship with, yeah. an art senior, but then when they get you know, yeah. to Drums of Autumn, that, that, yeah. that Murtaugh, they pick me up with Murtaugh, and he becomes, the, as you said, yeah. the Duncan Ennis character. Yeah. If he does become the Duncan Ennis character, did it, am I totally messing things up? Then who would who marries Jocasta? Well, Wouldn't it be related? Be yeah, it actually, absolutely, it could be. Well, it's such a back to the book. Like, so I mean, it was not it. He was not close. I mean, because I mean, well, he was willing to marry. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You can still have the Duncan and his character, yeah. and still have him marry. Yeah. That's true. Especially, yeah. you're right. Especially if they get separated, go to different yeah, prisons, and he's. Sent to the colonies, right. right? He could be shipped to the colonies, and we don't know this. Right. And we find out in season four. And, and Duncan, I mean, Myrtle would not just want to, you know, separate from Jane. Mm-mm. It's just not right. right. Yeah, I mean, he's a caretaker. He, yeah. He, he, there's responsibility. His role in mind would be to help Jane. So that we've talked a lot about, but you know, the show so far, and and I, I know we wanted to spend at least some time talking about the books. So does anybody have any, any burning questions or, or theories or, or anything else about where the books are going as we you know, have the eternal wait for the next 
book in the series. Clearly it's now a spy novel, but... <laughs> what do you think about the possibility that uh, Master Raymond might be a I love it. It's delicious. She is in love. I, I don't get the attraction. Oh, <laughs> I'm not attracted to the dude. Yeah, I, 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 I'm attracted to BJR yeah. because of Tobias, not because of the character. But um, no, Master Raymond, oh my gosh, bring it on. Anything, yeah. everything, well, all know, of it. He, he's going to be covered by that book at some point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about Master Raymond specifically. I think Claire is going to learn more about what she has in common. With Master Raymond, what the blue R's mean, and, and that sort of thing. So that's, that's definitely going somewhere. Um, I am fascinated to find out what's going to happen with Frank and Willie Nick, which is also supposed to be yes, yeah. that's eventually. Because I think as we have you know gone along in the, in the books, it's obviously Frank, obvious that Frank has a lot more than some. Yeah, I think some a lot. Well, oh my God. they could address a lot of that in this season, actually. Yeah, Frank and that's, yeah. True. That's, well, true. And, and I, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I've had a theory since, you know, Moby that was Frank's death really an accident. She texted me that, or we talked about it once, and I almost lost my shit. Yeah, I thought... I mean, now that we know all we know from, you know, from Moby with the letters and the letters and all that kind of stuff, it's obvious, it was obvious that Frank knew stuff all along, and he was trying to hide the from these people. It stands for reason those letters knew about him. And back to the episode real quick, because it's, it's germane to this, who else went like... Oh my gosh, it's starting when he started that letter to Reverend Wakefield. Yes. Yep. Yes. Holy monkey on a biscuit. Oh, it's those things in this whole, okay, Remember the prophecy. The, the prophecy. Kind of oh my gosh, all that stuff that was, that's alluded to that we're seeing happen just freaks me out in a very good way. But um, that, uh, back to the books, um, like they've said, this, this prophecy thing is like my new hot potato. I, I mean, or hot whatever. It's, who, who, who else can't get enough of that? The prophecy thing, or are you just like, oh my gosh, well, where is she going? Question every yes, so far. absolutely. Like, okay, well, well, we already know, right? We already kind of think, and it's been hinted at in the fandom for oh my gosh, many years before the, the TV series. That, and of course, she said she didn't write the book what Frank knew, but um, there's been so much speculation about. Well, of course, he knew something because. He, he got her writing lessons, shooting lessons. I mean, that's rando. He's not a writer or a shooter that we know of. Unless it's, I mean, it's possible. Maybe we don't know everything about Frank. He never but the No, he's a, she goes he over and over. He's, a, he's, he's very, <laughs> he's a professor type. That's, she goes, she, she says that all the time. He's very smart. Um, but that, oh my gosh. So when he started writing that, he was like, and, and narrating it, Dear Reverend Wakefield, and I think, that if you, it's something like, I, I'm sorry to not bug you, but sorry to basically contact you once again. I may need your help once again, or something like that. I swear to you, if we go check it, that's straight. I swear that's straight from one of the letters that has been dictated. They're really good, though. I mean, that's the one thing we can oh. say about this writing theme and production theme is they are very careful with the details. Like yes. Down to, you know, episode one, um, they were shooting the, the two boys together. You know, that was straight from the books. Oh, holy that, Hannah. You know, oh. let them go together hand in hand. So forgive me, um, I'm halfway through the eighth book, so oh, a little bit left. It's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. Um, but one of the things, and, and maybe I've missed it along the way, one of the things that's always I've wondered about talking about prophecies and kind of how that's happening, in the, the very first season, Frank sees the image of the sky mm -hmm. in the 40s. What the heck is that? Like, have they ever explained that? Or? Not in the books as such. Diana has said many times in interviews and everything, it's Jamie. And thanks to the very clever question that, that these girls asked when they interviewed Diana, we now know how old Jamie was as a ghost. What, 24? 25. 25. Oh, that's close. So, so that means... It's his age at the Battle of Claude. It's about the same age as mm -hmm. when Claude. And so my theory is is that he was actually, you know, when he wakes up on the battlefield in Voyager and he's thinking he's in purgatory, mm -hmm. that maybe he actually was kind of in purgatory oh, wow. and, and was able to... Do you think we're going to see flashbacks of that in this new season? I don't, think it, I don't think it will be addressed in this season. I think because, I mean, Dinah hasn't resolved what, what that mm -hmm. meant, really. I think that would be so yeah. spooky to be, like, the very last scene of the very last episode of this series if they made it all the way to the end. Yeah. Because, oh my god, that would give you goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would get emotional right now just thinking yeah. of it to call all the way back to season one to this oh, scene god. that everybody asks. Diana about. And we know, I mean, Diana has said she doesn't plan the books out, so I'm not sure Diana knows fully exactly what that means yet. But the ghost and the forgetting not 
Those are the two things. The, thank you. I've got to live long enough for the end of this year to find out what the ghosts and the forget-me-nots mean. <laughs> well, we've talked amongst ourselves, and do you guys have any theories about the forget-me-nots? We've talked about this amongst ourselves. And I, other fans, too. We don't come up. We're not wholly responsible for this. But um, there's some... Uh, what is Claire doing in the later books in, uh, in the Northeast? Is that a trick question? No. Well, she's always, as long as we've known her, gardening, trying to get like new plants, right? Herbs, medicine. So we've, I'm sure we've read it out there too, but um, I believe at least Mandy and I have talked about the, and well, Mandy's the one who actually brought up the thing about the forget-me-nots to me. It's like, you were thinking, or maybe, maybe I read it, but um, speculation is somehow, somewhere, maybe not in her gathering of things, but somehow, somewhere, those forget-me-nots or put there purposefully. Well, I think I kind of said they're there purposefully, but we don't know who and how. Well, planted, well, yeah. It, it might be that, that Claire herself told him at one point that she went to the stones for, for you know, mm-hmm. for, for the forget-me-nots that were there, and maybe he goes back and plants them. Yeah. I think it's going to be very, very interesting to, mm-hmm. to, to see where that goes, because I, I really don't have any really good ideas about the forget-me-nots. So I just wanted to share one thing that I noticed, and I loved in the movie, um, when he's on the battlefield, almost dying, and there's a, a rabbit. Oh, yeah, we talked about so that too. Yeah. Read the Hilton Tree Oracle, and uh-huh. um, rabbits were um, a hair is a uh, Bhagavata held a hair close to her heart, released it, and absorbed it, run for some hidden message that would assist her in her fight against the Roman invaders. Mm. And then also, um, the hair was often seen as a Celtic phoenix, which I think Claire is kind of like that since it was the last to flee the burning stubble when the final sheath was cut. And then when Jane, when Claire sees that little sparrow, that red, mm-hmm. don't you think it was Jamie maybe? Give no, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> <right? laughs> uh-huh. I'm like, what if Jamie really was dead? And somehow Claire has been able to over time. So I think that was Jamie. Coming. Which would explain the ghost. <laughs> That's true. That's so, I mean, true. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it kind of, you're passionate it's all good <laughs> so we know that at from uh the third book i believe it is that um Clara comes into her full power where when her mm-hmm. hair is completely quiet. Mm-hmm. She's not there yet. Right. But I'm just wondering if she's not the one that is going to completely feel Roger's throat. Uh, I, I, I think, think she, she is. Once again, yeah. yes. From the time, please, please. Um, from the time that I read when, when Roger and William went back and, and met the doctor, I can't remember his name right now. But yeah, that was my full lot on If he could do it, I bet he's not as good as Claire's going to be. I, I think I think they're already. I, I, I think we said four is okay. How many people want to read daily lines for for Nina's for me to tell me something? Okay, um, I'll just say um, I think that's already starting to be addressed in some of the daily lines that I've seen. So I think it's going to happen. Um, I hope it happens just because I don't hear Richard Branson say as much as possible. Because I promise you, he's a very beautiful voice. Um, so um, we're gonna have what like. Six seasons of him talking. I know. <laughs> I told him, I said, when he got that, when we were, he was, you know, preparing an audition for that role. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. So, you know, I'm, 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 I think you can be a perfect Roger. I think it's going to be great. If you don't demand, demand a stunt man for that, hey, he's saying, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Can I make a request? Because I listen to you guys all oh, the time. Oh, sure. I Ah, we would. He is an excellent singer. I have he heard. Oh my God, he sings too. Oh, he's, he was he was also so he's, like, he's he's he was a voice major. Yeah, yeah. he studied voice. He did musicals before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's done any interviews yet at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will yeah. tell you from from you know my knowledge and everything is that stars keeps very 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 tight grasp on. Um, on what oh, they yeah. can do. And being able to do interviews Absolutely. with people who are so currently. It's not that people yeah. don't want, they haven't asked or whatever. It's just, that, and especially I know, 
I, I think you can tell now that Sam and Kat and Tobias are a little more comfortable with the restrictions and everything because they've been in it longer. But as the new guys come in, they're kind of feeling their way and figuring out what they can and can't do, and so it becomes a little more difficult. But, but oh no, it, it's always... Yeah. It's always on if our mind. If we need a petition, I will start it. But, no, I mean, like, the younger stars, like Caesar and, uh, Caesar, uh, <laughs> and Lauren Lyle, I mean, they were Instagram story a lot of stuff from the set that I'm like, ooh, man, I'm surprised stars didn't, like, pull them out to the side and was like, you gotta stop doing that, um, because they did really get a lot more glimpses than any other person on any other season ever did, so... Thank you. Yeah. Maybe they're too young to know any better. Right. So who's excited? I just I'll put this out there. Who's excited about? Um, oh, first of all, that last the cast, the official cast picture of César. Did you guys see it? The first character portrait. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, oh you're my. Already seen We've already seen the, like, like snaps. No, 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 no. The one that was part of the actual stars, yeah. the, the bios, right? Oh my gosh, I cannot. He's, I, he's, he's, he's no. Yes, he is. But what I mean is, that is our Fergus, and I can't wait for the beach. I can't wait for the but beach. How for many people want to the beach him wedding. Just wrap him up in a box somewhere and just keep him. Because I mean, he's so cute. I don't want to lose him. Oh, the picture <laughs> they let out um, on the in the Outlander, not the Outlander, the Comic Con special edition of the Entertainment Weekly. Oh, where he was of holding him. him the, oh my goodness, holding him, and I'm just like, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, exactly what's going on. That he didn't read part of it where they said he went back and he got his hair every month. <laughs> yeah, Ridley yeah. Adams Day, and I understand. I mean, that's that's what Diana was always talking about. Where you know, visual mediums have to do things differently. You have to yeah. Yeah, see at a glance that uh, hey, a lot of time has passed, and he's living rough. And so if he's not that clean shave, yeah. then he might not ever go to a lolly bar right. in the the yeah. show at all. So mm-hmm. that's true. But the Dunn bomb, I wouldn't really have covered all that. No, no. they may not reference that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but didn't they already? Didn't they talk about it when? I, they, they talked about that one in the last... At the end of two? Season. <coughs> I'm just saying... See, my, the, books, the books in the show melded my mind, and that's actually mm. just where... Yeah. So, we've got a few more minutes for... Any more? Well, any we more have some things. Or any questions or anything, just always want to talk about and learn about other people, because, I mean, social media is great. There's nothing like being able to look people in the eyes and say, oh, my God, you do? Um, I've always thought that. What um, websites on social media do you like regularly kind of check to stay up to date? Outlander TV news. Outlander TV news. I mean, we all of my writers have jobs, so we're not sitting at home waiting for you know stuff to post or whatever. Um, but as soon as something we get something from stars or we see an interview, um, we usually post it. Um, nothing, hardly anything has been posted here because two of us are here. And like I said, everybody else has jobs. But um, our Twitter, um, I usually retweet a lot of stuff. Um, I've gotten away from the um, behind the scenes and other things. I those things take so much time, and I've been wanting to do it for like a couple months. So you might see one of those soon. But um, I mean, I'm just gonna plug myself. Say I'm your TV news, um, and I'm. I'm we are one of the original news sites for Outlander. I, I was going to say, I'll get in my soapbox a little bit here because I'm like, I can't, so I don't, I don't have a vested interest in you know, specific web clips and everything. But I try to stick to the sites that run by fans that were there from the beginning that I don't feel like jump on the bandbox once they once they you know, figured out or anybody once they figured out that there were a lot of crazy other brands that would be anything. Um, and I try to stay away from those that are the obvious clickbait sites. There's a few Scotland. Like something here, old, that's what we're getting when it is, there's an Australian tag. That do the really, the really gratuitous headlines that you can just tell they're trying to make people click on their hand because they want the ad revenue. So, I mean, if I'm going to give somebody ad revenue, I want it to go to people that, you know, that I know love the story and are invested in, aren't just interested in how many people they can get to click their site. So, that's, that's the way I feel about it. Personally, I mostly follow Twitter just because it's, it's, it's current. Everything that's happening is usually happening at, at the pace of it actually being put out. So I have some notifications set up so it will pop up for me. Yeah. Uh, but th- that's mostly where I go, and I'll find links to different sites through that. And most of them don't all go to one site. That's what's so crazy right. about it now. Um, Entertainment Weekly is doing a lot of coverage mm-hmm. on it now, um, now that they have staff writers who are as obsessed with it as we are. Yeah. I so, mean, when we started this in the beginning, there was no mainstream press, really. There were a few sites. You know, Jolie Lash is a great one for mainstream um, she does a lot of, uh, and she's a true fan too. I'm actually, um, she's actually, 
She does. Yeah, yeah. Access Hollywood. So she does um, a lot of great interviews. Yes, yeah, interesting questions. I like. I don't like it when interviewers ask them the same dark questions. Like mm-hmm. you know, I want. I want like some lightning to hit the next time somebody asks Sam or Richard or somebody about a kill. Okay, just hit them and zap them and remove them from the press pool because uh, I like people to ask things we haven't heard before. So as we cl- oh, one last question and then we have to do one little thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, they brought, yes, I saw that on, I think John Gary Steele said that on Twitter. They, the bell? I don't know about the bell. We were told the sign and the papers hanging on the rafters, yeah. or yeah, dra- drawings. Yeah. yeah. And how much of a genius is John Gary Steele? Uh, he's, I'm like, can you come to my house? You know, I will <laughs> give you however much money you want to just come. But which season of Outlander would you like to decorate your house? I don't care. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Leah, even Leah was gorgeous with the tapestries and, and all that stuff. So the parents' part, it was really, I would move in. So as we... know about the hidden J and C? Yes. And then I have a question. The number, is, did Diana write in the book the address of the print shop? Was it number 41, which is up that wasn't a 41. I saw somewhere on, um, I think, again, look for John Gary Steele post. Somebody mm-hmm. figured it out. It's a symbol. It's not really a 41 or whatever that is. Yeah. It's a symbol for symbol for 10 yeah. and lead. Yeah. Because those are two elements ah. that are used in printing. You know, yeah. Make, yeah, 10 and lead. And so, yeah. Well, as we wrap up, we have um, a, a, some little giveaways for you guys that Random House was, was nice enough to, um, to share. And um, so we have five copies of Seven Stones to Sandra Fall to hand out. And for that, we, are, we have a few, a, few, a few trivia questions of varying um, difficulty. difficulty levels. So the, the first one... Was. And, and, hey, just for yes. a second, we want to try to, we, we don't have a future, so let's try to be organized and not everybody shout out, raise your hand. Oh, yeah. We'll do our best. Yeah. We get the we, first we hand. We're going to launch, or who's the first person to raise our hand, and <laughs> we'll call on you. Okay, so the first question was, what is the name of the castle that is the, the seat of the, in the book, in the story, of the seat of the M- Mackenzies? Garmin, you were first. <laughs> Well, I anticipated she was going to say something else. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Leah. Yeah. Leah. Yep, she got it. Well, okay. Oh. Okay. Well, the question the castle, the was the name of the, of the castle Mackenzie. of the seat of the Mackenzies. Oh, castle. <laughs> well, there's four more. Yay. <laughs> Yay. You didn't send the question. Okay, it's okay. We'll, we'll do it from memory then. Oh, actually, I, I know what it is. Don't ask it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, what was the name of the place in episode 103 where Thomas, Thomas Baxter and the other kid ate the suspected wood garlic or were oh. possessed by devils? Blackbird. Yes! Literally, if you ever heard of the show in Scotland, that's my favorite oh, filming location. Like that. that is a <laughs> cool place right outside of Boris. Uh, in Scotland, and you can actually go and walk on the stones and do it. I'm funny how all these sounds are pronounced. I'm like, all the first things. The first thing you need to know about Gaelic and in Scotland is however it looks, and you think it should be pronounced. Do the opposite. It's not. Because I guarantee you it is not pronounced. I never seen the light on air until I heard this television series started. It's weird. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... A, believe it or not... I think we've got a little time. But um, there's not going to be letters in the Gaelic languages that are in English. There's only like 24. And there were 20, well, I forget what the number is. And so a lot of other sounds are made by combinations of the letters. And there are all letters that just aren't pronounced in Gaelic. So that's what makes everything more complicated. So our next question. Oh, she had the two. So let's do um, one from, how about one from the books? One from later books. Where, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit now. Where did Brianna find the, her letter to her from Frank. This blue, blue shirt. Blue. It had slipped down in the back of the desk. There was a secret compartment in the desk. Correct. The desk. And where, where the desk? we're going to give that to you, but the where library. was it? Where was the desk? In their library. At, at library. Yes. There we go. Yay. Okay. So that was free. Uh, 
Well, there, there were three questions that we were going to do based on the favorite fan theories, and I'm trying to remember who came up with my favorite fan theory. I think, who was it that said, um, oh, about the, um, See, I'm sure. Oh, who, maybe Murta? Yeah. Who, who was the one who, who first, I mean, we, we know what the world has speculated, but who was the one who first brought up the Murta speculation of maybe he didn't was die? Was, was someone you? in this area? Was it yourself? Yeah. It was me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it was you. So that, that was my favorite. Well, you're very welcome. Well, we have one more. Go ahead. One more question, just to yes. finish it up. Uh, the last question. What's the name of the plantation that Jocasta owns? River Run. River Run. Have a run. There's our fourth one. Thank you guys so much for coming out. We really appreciate it. We hope to see you next year. Hopefully. Thank you so much.